Hi Pisces. Okay, if you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Actually, I've been in a silent, um, like a silent sort of trip with myself. And it's been really good. And this is the, f today's the first day I talked in a while. Um, and particularly in this way. So thank you for being that opening. And part of the reason that I wanted to record you on this evening um, is because, well, to let you know that you're a really good tribe member. Okay. Uh, hi, Zimi. You know, there's such a care when Pisces is, is really in that open, receptive, um, nurturing, right? If Venus is exalted in your sign, it's like this really nurturing space, you know, um, and being of service to the tribe, right? When you can, it's, it's a really beautiful thing. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. I know this light's a bit bright, but if I turn it off, then the cards are too dark. So we have to compromise. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I guess we'll open, let's open them up. Oh, awesome. Uh, this is your inner child, which is actually uh, a card that represents, um, what's well, the 10, right? So you're, you, this person has come to a place of uh, understanding what they really have, you know, and being being content and grateful and gracious enough that you have enough to share right this is actually their uh the food for the tribe you know and this person's so happy because there's enough to share again um, they know that everything will be good right because the ne the basic necessities are taken care of Right, no one's living, there's, uh, well, there's great effort here and no one I heard is living outside of their means. Uh, there's a togetherness too, that's really beautiful. Uh, it's looking over at your present self, let's see what that's about. Okay, this is the seven of souls. This card's quite contemplative. It's looking, that's looking over at the future which is the source of all water. This, this card particularly is called the source. It represents um, how all things need water, right? Um, and we can have, people can be going through and experiencing st like spiritual drought too, you know? And maybe that's a part of Jupiter and Pisces energy in a really positive way is opening up those waters, right? It's like, allowing wherever Aquarius is too reserved uh, in interacting with the water. This is Pisces allowing it to, you know, it's kind of like no longer having the dam like block it up, you know, and of course in the beginning there's a rush of it, right? But then after that, it, it finds that, you know, water always finds its level and its flow. Um, Let's read about the Seven of Cups because she has a bit of concern. This is sort of the, again, seven. the souls are uh, cups in this deck. Number seven is the era of the soul. Okay, this is this. As shamans developed their practices, they taught people how to attend to their souls. Shamans are there to help but mostly to teach. All people have the ability to remember their connection to spirit, right to the source, and to maintain that connection. Let's read that again. All people have the ability to remember their connection to spirit and to maintain that connection. This is the longer humans walk the earth, the further they can wander from their innate spirit. 
Tools can be used to forge a new relationship with the spiritual world. This card represents the progress of, hum of humankind, all that is lost and all that is found along the way. This, it, it is a card pointing towards the future. Beautiful. Do you see this, Pisces? Do you see what I'm seeing here? What we just talked about is her looking over again at the source, which traditionally would be the temperance card, right? Which is about the exchange of water. It's a very spiritual card. But I guess there needs to be balance, right? Sevens are a sacred number, yes, but they're not even. Uh, so there's a need to... Um, Because it doesn't have to be one and one to be even, right? You could have a three three points, but it's like, are they even? Right? That's that's what's important here. Is like, I guess it goes into an emphasis of uh, people believing whether they have enough within them to sustain physically, tangibly, re like regularly, right? Food, water, shelter, basic stuff. But then also understanding that will always have that right we're always provided in a in a fundamental way um then it's about finding the source spiritually so that that helps well actually heard i see that that helps the hunt in whatever is being trying to be found let's see your fear Okay, just as an exercise, imagine whatever it is that you feel like you need, right? You had half of that. People, money, books, clothes, whatever. It, it, that which sustains you, right? That which is a part of your life, you had half of that. I need you to know that you would still survive, Okay, and now this is the thing is this is just a mental fear. This is an exercise to let you know what is. Well, there are some parts of reality that are hard, right? For instance, to have this meet, to have this success here, it means that in life there is death, right? When you eat an animal, for instance, or a plant, you're ingesting the energy or the soul in a way of that of that which is which was living right it's it's giving its source to you which then everything comes back around let's see about this five because Okay, uh, this tech in this deck technically the swords are called blood, um, which I know sounds like a little intense, but although it shouldn't be because it fills our body, right? And it actually sanguine is representing representational of one's happiness is the health of our blood too, uh, and of course bones. But that's another story. Um, but these are the swords here. Right, like even when you cut a dandelion, the white that comes out, that's that's the life source of it, right? Everything has this. Again. Um, oh, this also re represents hunting. Okay. It says, a good hunter knows that waiting and watching is a huge part. This is your, this is your challenge. A good hunter knows that waiting and watching is a huge part of a successful hunt. Whether waiting for tracking prey, uh, wh whether waiting for or tracking prey, he has to pay attention. Once the animal is sighted, a good hunter waits for the right opportunity in order to make the cleanest kill possible. He wants a shot that creates the least amount of danger for himself, for his fellow hunters, and the least amount of pain for that which 
life is being taken from. For he does not want the beast to suffer either. Sometimes a clean shot isn't always as safe as it seems. So one must stay still and alert, waiting for the perfect opportunity. So maybe in this, it's sort of a little bit of a rush. For some of you, this could be whatever I guess you're working on, right? Maybe some of people want to rush their spiritual process, for instance, get out of some sort of, right? Traditionally, for instance, this is the Ten of Swords, right? Different different uh, perspective in this deck. That's why I like it so much. Uh, but still, so there's a patience, right? And to understand, I guess, whenever we have more of something, it means we have less of something else. Now, of course, this can be very positive. Let's see your strength. Yes, the King of Jewels. This is an awesome card, which actually looks over at your fear. So there's, I see, so there's counsel here. Uh, this is learning also from your elders. Any of you who, uh, the Pisces reading over on the other space. Uh, let's read the man, the, he's actually the father, the father of jewels. Ah. It says, here is a robust man looking prosperous and well-pleased with life. He has the bearing of some king and somehow hints at future kings. <clears throat> we do not know how he became king. Was he the best hunter? The most skilled craftsperson? The son of some previous king? People become rulers in all sorts of ways. Likewise, there are many kinds of rulers, benevolent, controlling, greedy, or even useless. This king, though, he's one of the good ones and understands how hard life can be and how important it is to work together. While he takes pride in his people, and his culture, he can also laugh and be at ease with them, for he is fully aware that the authority that is being wielded comes with responsibility. This is also about maintaining justice, which traditionally would be the King of Pentacles, which is also another card that sort of represents being slow, like slow with something. And so actually, in relation to other people, too, I, I see a part of this, although this, this is your reading. But maybe that's a part of it, is some of you where you have found that the light in yourself and therefore can connect to the source, like to um, I wanted to read you something, but I'll read it another time. The point is, is that those of you who have found that, however, however much that, and bright that light is, you know, sometimes it's hard when you can see something, for instance, and someone cannot. And so maybe there's a patience with that too, and understanding that there's always like a journey about it. The two of souls. This here is when, like, to me, when a soul is, is talking also to their ancestors, you know, it's something that is, uh, where they come from. You know, love and laughter, love and laughter, it is so powerful. Especially laughter, because in that, we talked about this, right? Like, what's funny or not? Some things, it's really good to 
you know, the, you know what's the funny is the most threatening thing, for instance, to like a bad king, to an authority like that, is an artist, you know, is a poet, is someone who has a different story than what is being dictated, right? Who can laugh at the king, right? And be like, hey man, the emperor, you ain't wearing any clothes. <laughs> like that's the biggest threat. You know, like another person's army, like that doesn't really do anything because it's all the same energy like playing with itself. But to actually, because what it is, is when there's laughter and it's coming from a pure joyful place of understanding, like there is no threat there. It, it This always counters any fear, you know? Now, of course, there's always waves of things uh, and responsibility and times to protect yourself. Oh, baby. I guess in those that you love, right? The children, the elders, what have you. Um, where is your closest water source? That's actually palpable, like you can, uh, or potable, if you will. Uh, how far... Out of curiosity, like, how far? Like, where you normally drive, like, what would it take to walk there? You know what I mean? Um, who's a good hunter in your family? Who likes to share a lot too? Um, and who likes to take a lot? I feel like we've talked about this before, but your tribe, right? I guess this would be more of a near thing, although spiritual tribe, I feel like, can be far out, right? Like, even, like, me to you in Australia, right? Or wherever, like, we're connective and a beautiful, wherever we all are, it's like making invisible golden, like, threads, right? And I'm so appreciative for you. Yes, thank you for being so brave, right? And releasing your fear so that you can open uh, these other really beautiful spaces, you know, thank you, uh, but I guess fear can kind of work in the same way too, and that's why, again, it's important when thinking about things, right, when, when feel, when, when wanting to, like, feel into something or connect with something, That's coming from a place of, um, well, I heard it's letting go of the restriction of Aquarius. It, again, like we talked about in the beginning where it's like Aquarius, like the, the technicality of Aquarius becomes more open in Pisces, right? Let's read about this king to close this out. The king of souls, the fought, the man of souls. That's a big, that's a big title. Okay. And actually you pulled these two, you pulled the ace of uh, souls, which is the etching of soul all the way to the man, which is one end to the other, right from the beginning to the end. And it says this, you can look at them because they're so pretty. It says the age shaman has a lifetime of experience and wisdom. He is shackled to a hagstone to represent the depth of his commitment. As he ages, his body weakens and withers 
while his soul grows in strength and confidence. His eye can now easily see the activities in the spirit realm even as his eyesight is in the physical world dims. He understands the gifts that he has been given. He knows his responsibility to share what he knows with his tribe. The shaman has been practicing for many years and he has the skills needed to effectively teach people what they need to learn, no matter how difficult the lesson. Right, this card represents life experienced, life experience, and be having wisdom through that experience and through the skill sets that have been built, whether through failure or success. Maybe some of you should make like an amulet for peace or for, you know, for, for something that is kind of bigger than you or where you feel like you need more positivity in something. Now this, I see this doesn't, well, this wouldn't be something interpersonal, but it does connect to the world, right? Like we said in the beginning about humanity. That's important, right? Some people don't know, for instance, that love isn't pain. And so fear is still projected, right? Or they don't understand that the meat they buy in the grocery store in the styrofoam and the saran wrap actually came from an animal and how and what it really takes to take an animal's life and to field dress it and to split it up in pieces and turn it into things that are edible that we just know by name without even thinking about it. Do you know what I mean? What is this one? The five of nature. Well, this is the stone of nature. I heard teach your children well. Almost, it says, whether flesh, stone, or propulsion, everything that exists is energy. When energy is balanced, there is stability. When the energy is out of balance, there is chaos. Almost always, st stability brings health and chaos brings pain. Just a minute. I guess I look down at this. This says the bounty of nature means the continued existence of the tribe. Humans need to, humans, or I actually saw, it says the word learned, but I saw needs to plant, tend, and harvest because then they gain more agency over their own lives and can take better care of their kin. Again, good tribe member. And if your tribe is small or you're in a place of singularity, right? Like where, I don't know, it depends where you are, right? We're all in different points. Uh, then know what your skill sets are right? Reinforce those. Don't be confused about your own power.
Because this is also an ability to let go of control too, right? And if there's anything that you'd like to learn, perhaps that's a this is a nice time to consider that. You know, maybe for some of you, for instance, especially if you've been consciously trying to work on spiritual spaces, and I see congratulations with that. Um you know, emotional spaces, what have you, it's like, cool. Well, maybe you are where you are. And again, you're not meant to rush into some other space because now you're supposed to take what you've learned in ways of faith, right? And your life experience, and then apply that in a more practical sense, right? Because this is your strength too. Because there's something also emotional that you have to let go. It's like a stone of, it's a stone in your soul, you know? Uh-huh. And it probably has to do when you're a kid. I feel like for a lot of you, your father. We talked about the father too a lot, right? Because this affects all our relationships. Okay. And remember that environment affects one mentally, okay? Emotionally, spiritually, it affects us. So how is your environment? Is this steady? Right, how do you feel about that? Where you're at? Um, if any of you know that there's a time limit with that, you can feel it, or you know there's a shift, or you know you need to shift, or what have you. Jupiter's going to do it for you anyway. It'll always push out, um, especially any of you with Pisces rising, it'll really push you out of, um, well, I guess wherever Pisces rules, it will kind of push out of there. So, uh, I think this is more of the equinoxes, too. There's something about that. The spring and then autumn equinoxes. Interesting. Okay. I thank you for being here. I hope this was of service. Uh, all the readings for February, especially the ones at nighttime, have been very, um, like, deeper and wider. So, uh, however this sat with you, I do hope that it was helpful. And thank you for your time. There's a lot of people, too, uh, this more recently that went over to Patreon as well, Join the Garden. Thank you for that. If you were one of those or have already been a part of that, thank you so very much. Um, thanks for being a good tribe member, Pisces. Yeah. And remember, love conquers and causes a boundary for fear. And with any boundary, you have to go and keep upkeep, upkeep it, right? Make sure nothing, there's a little cracks in there or something needs to be adjusted or you got to replace a little bit and like solidify it, you know? Okay. These cards are so cool. I could keep reading them for so long. <laughs> All right. I love you so much. Take care. I'll talk to you next time. Peace out.